Is Lewis Hamilton the GOAT? I mean, I know what I am, but that's something I'll continue to try and show you. What's up GQ, this is Lewis Hamilton, and today I'm going undercover on the internet. It's actually me. Let's check Twitter. I feel like not enough of you are conscious of the fact that Lewis is a sir. Yeah, I mean, it's only an English thing, isn't it? So I think it's pretty cool to be a knight of the English realm or whatever they call it. Yeah, it's a shame it's not back in the day because back in the day, they, you know, when you watch movies, the knight could go around and knight his friends or other people. I'd be knighting all my friends, but I can't do that now. I said, nobody thought about telling me that Lewis Hamilton's afraid of onions for some reason. I'm not afraid of onions. I just hate onions, particularly raw onions. I don't mind if it's cooked in a soup or something like that, but onions and chives are the things that, uh, I don't know, it just reminds me of B.O. You know, when you're around someone that has just the worst B.O. and you want to get away from them. <laughs> what is your fondest memory you have had at the Met Gala? Oh, geez, these two pictures. I think the blue one was one of my first times that I went. I think my fondest memory is the last time that I went. It is such a glamorous and beautiful event, and you feel really privileged to have the opportunity to go. But I really, I kind of, over time, I was kind of like, okay, I've been... I've been a few times. I felt like I wanted to utilize the opportunity to help people. So I, I felt like I was like, maybe that's a good opportunity to bring some great young designers that perhaps would never have the chance to go to the Met and really kind of put the spotlight on them, in which we did. It was really beautiful to see the attention they got doing covers and styling people within Vogue, getting the CFD award. Just to be a little bit part of that really like made me proud to be a part of. You can eat only one food for the rest of your life. What are you choosing? One food for the rest of my life. Oh, geez. Like one meal? I think it's gonna, that's a difficult one. I, I, I think it would be a curry. Love Indian food. There's one food that I do eat all the time when I get home and it's just minestrone soup. And I just have the same minestrone soup all the time. I don't ever get tired of it, so. Or avocado toast. Super easy. What's this? Kora. Kora. Now on to Kora. What obstacles has Lewis Hamilton had to overcome during his career? Well, I mean, it's been a long, a long period of time that I've been racing since I was eight. Obstacles were funding, finding sponsorship and support was key to me getting to where uh, I am today. Not really fitting in, in in a sport which was white dominated and wasn't an area that was diverse. We were the only black family on the scene, so experienced a lot of racism, a lot of pushback. And so just trying to fit in and struggling with that acceptance was a big, big obstacle to overcome. A failure in my sport, you're constantly faced with challenges. You can't always win, naturally. The natural highs you get are amazing, and then you have these lows. The challenge of the mental side, mental stability, mental health has been a huge part of my whole journey. Probably since I was 11, I would say, is when it really started to become a, a real challenge. I went to do karate when I was six because I was getting bullied at school because I wanted to be able to protect myself. And then I was seeing other kids getting bullied and I wanted to be able to help them. But when I step in, I'll just get beaten up too. And I was a small kid. So those are things that I, that I encountered and I wanted to be able to overcome. What exactly are the things that Lewis Hamilton is good at? And then someone's answered, he's probably the best on the grid under the brakes, which is a big part of why he turns in good laps and good at overtaking. That is definitely an element of one of my strengths that actually started from Right House. My dad, when we started racing when I was eight, my dad went and stood on the track and he was watching like the quickest kid at the time. There was like two or three kids at the fastest in, in the class that I was in. And he went and stood where they were braking and then he made me break. And then he walked like several meters later, or five meters later, whatever. And then he said, this is where you break. And I was like, yeah, but dad, I can't break there. And at the time, believing that can't, it was a part of my vocabulary. He says, yes, you can. So I practice, practice, try and break there, spin off. And over time, after a thousand tries or whatever it was, eventually I could break there. It just shows that firstly, there's no such thing as can't or can't, whatever the Americans say. And then when you fail, you try again. You fail, you try again. There's no such thing as actually failure, it's just a lesson. The animal F1 refused back every single outfit that Lewis Hamilton's worn in 2023 season. I wonder what he would choose as his favorite of the season. I mean, I don't remember them all. There's a lot of outfits of 2023 season. One of my favorite pieces was Vegas. Donatella Versace did me a custom jacket. I didn't actually wear that to the track. I wore that like Sunday night. That was very, very special. Back to Twitter. Does Roscoe have a favorite toy? He likes squeaky things mostly. Anything with a squeak in it. 
particularly like a tennis ball with a squeak in it. Honestly, he's just been a good boy ever since he was he was young. There was one time I was home in winter when Coco was around, and for some reason, I don't know, maybe it was jet lag, but one of them was pooing in the in my bedroom. In the middle of the night, the room started smelling, and one of them kept pooing in the exact same spot, which was right over like a vent. So the, the smell was just hitting me and waking me up. And I just remember Roscoe just sitting there, but like it wasn't me, Dad. Lewis Hamilton is in Fortnite. Yep. I got the opportunity to be in Fortnite. It's a game that I've played for a long time, but I said only if Roscoe could be in it. They were like, no problem. So Roscoe is like in my jetpack, like hovering behind me as he's my sidekick. Everything we know about the upcoming Lewis Hamilton Brad Pitt racing film project, which the F1 star says it would be the greatest racing movie ever. A racing Top Gun, please let this be true. It is one of the most exciting things that I'm fortunate to be a part of. I'm learning a lot I've this from the beginning when we were sitting with Brad and, you know, Aaron the writer and um, Joe. I think from my perspective, just trying to make sure that it's authentic, the, it's as authentic a racing movie as possible, which having watched a lot of racing movies is one of the most difficult movies to depict, I think, um, and to, to capture. Obviously the technology is much more advanced than it was back in the day when they had, you know, the cameras like sellotape to their heads. I love watching movies since I was a kid. Seeing like Interview with a Vampire a thousand times, seeing Top Gun and all these great movies where you see these, these individuals who bring these movies to life. And then to be standing with Brad talking about racing and him wanting to learn about racing and explaining it to him from the breaking point to the turning point to Apex, all these different things. And then being on the track with Brad and having him drive. We were in LA and we went to this track and we were I showed him around and nearly put the car on a wall, actually. I, don't know, I was just on the edge. It wasn't really near, but he's hair-raising moment. He's got a real knack for it already, so he's just been working on honing on that skill. But every now and then you're just like, oh, shit, that's Brad. Can you please ask Lewis Hamilton what his four favorite films are? Oh, shoot. Uh, Coming to America, Trading Places. The new one is Six Degrees of Separation, and then Scarface. Is there anything that you can't do? Yeah, I'm terrible at languages. I'm terrible at tennis. Not very good at golf. Terrible at maths. There's plenty of stuff that I'm not good at, but whatever it is, I still give it a go, even though I might not be the best at things. I still try, I keep trying, and just never give up with it, even if you get frustrated. Back to Twitter. We want to know when you're going to be releasing some music. Yeah, geez. I've done music for so such a long time. I think I started doing music when I was like 16. Properly record my first song till I was about 21. But I have some new stuff, so we will see. One of my bedrooms at home I have set up with some really great speakers. So I have my own little setup and I just record myself. When I'm in LA, more often than not, I'm here to a, a studio. Of recent, we rented a house in December and did this whole writing camp and I had a whole group of people with me that massively talented individuals and we had three rooms and I was bouncing between each room and so I uh, did that and when I was in Jamaica I was doing music every day. I've got some new stuff, I need to finish it, put it together and then maybe I'll share it with you. What's your favourite drink? The wife wants to know. Honestly, I don't like promoting stuff but my favourite drink right now is Amave. It's my non-alcoholic tequila that we've spent the last like 20 months putting together and going through the whole tasting process, going out to Mexico City and out to Jalisco where um, tequila is made. Understanding the process and that's been ex so exciting and see something born and then something that you generally love, you know, because I don't drink. So it's a perfect one to be able to wind down, particularly after a long day. How do you pick the countries to travel to when you're on your break? And are there any on your bucket list? There are, I have been to India, but I've not actually traveled through India. I, wanna, I really wanna go back to India. But one of my dreams is to travel, at hi at hike through the Himalayas. I wanna climb Mount Everest one day. That's definitely on the bucket list. There's still a lot of countries in Africa that I really want to visit, like Nigeria, Ghana, Madagascar. I mean, there's a lot there that I still haven't been to see and experience. I've downloaded this app and I've, just, and I've put in all the places I've been. I think it's called Bin. I've only seen like 33% of the, of the world. So there's still so much to discover. How I pick the places that I go to nowadays is apart from places that I have been to before that I feel comfortable in, I feel, you know, where I'm able to really un fully unplug and in disengage from this crazy world that we live in. But I like to try and do it, create great memories on that on a trip. I want to learn something as well. So I want to learn th things about cultures and these different places that I go to. Yeah, I want it to be a bit of a learning experience. I don't like being on the beach.
What is your favorite sporter outside of motorsport? Serena. Has to be Serena. She's just, she's just a bundle of fun, great energy, serious competitor, loves karaoke, like with a real passion and, um, and just playing. She's just a really playful person. Time for some TikTok. I wonder what does he want his legacy to be? That's a difficult one to answer short, but I think helping people is something that, I, that I'm passionate about. Education, knowing that my education was probably the worst part of my life, and it is for so many people that are struggling. So many people don't have access to education, but so many people are being excluded within schools. So many people are, are struggling with so many different things going into school, mostly af often affected from things that are happening outside of school, whether it's on the way to school, whether it's in you know, social settings or at home. And I really, really want to help tackle that because I've been an experience that through my life. If there's a little me or a little young girl out there that's experiencing something similar, I want to work towards fixing that, that everyone gets a good education, no matter where you're from and what your socioeconomic background is. That's it. Signing off.